Hi Grant, it's great to speak with you. So, can you tell me a little bit about factory automation systems? Well, our customers come to us for a variety of reasons. They either have a new product that they want to make, they either want to make more of an existing product, they either want to be more safe in their manufacturing, or they want to be more efficient. What we do is we take uh, the technologies and tools at our disposal and we use those to improve their process or create a new process for them. Well, there's a tremendous amount of information on factory floors these days. It's relatively inexpensive to uh, have an ethernet connection where you could get information out of basically anything. So traditional things such as drives, servos, robots, um, you know, all these things down to air conditioners. So the key to this is to find that data and turn it into, turn it into information, something that's actually usable and, uh, and valuable to a customer. Uh, data alone is, is, uh, is of no use. So the future of this is to um, have the systems and the tools to collect the data, store it as needed, and then retrieve the information that you need and only show the important information to the operator or the uh, business manager or the production manager as needed. Well, to factor automation systems, information solutions can mean a variety of different things. So the first is machine coordination. You'll have, uh, we'll have separate islands of automation where it might be robots, uh, a case packer, uh, some type of production line, and having all these systems coordinated together. So sharing information from, product, from the production data throughout the entire process all the way to the warehouse um, to, to keep these systems running. The second is interfacing to uh, an ERP or business system. So that might be uh, pulling uh, order requests, it might be keeping up with inventory management um, and, and deciding what products to make at a particular shift. It might be for uh, scheduling, uh, any, type of, uh, any type of need from the business end relaying that down to the manufacturing floor and making good decisions based on that information. Uh, the third thing is production tracking and maintenance information. So knowing from anywhere in the world how a particular line or overall plant or system is operating is of huge value to organizations. We've had customers uh, that tell us that, that Fractions of a percent of efficiency translate to hundreds of, you know, hundreds of thousands to millions of dollars in each plant. So being able to track that and identify uh, problems or opportunities for improvement in a real-time basis is a real value to our customer. As for the industrial Internet of Things and Industry 4.0. Uh, those have really been those have kind of been the buzzwords for the past uh, several months to a year, and you know I think it's going to be a, just a, a matter of time of seeing how much value we get out of collecting every piece of data off of the plant floor. Some is certainly more valuable to customers than others, and uh, and on a case by case basis, uh, depending on their staffing and production requirements. Um, you know, the more information really is, uh, is, seems to be the way of the future. Well, in the late 70s to 80s, a PLC was to replace a relay panel, and now it is a full-blown computing system uh, that's running entire manufacturing plants. So uh, the advancements that have been the biggest advantage to us and to our customers are how integrated you could pull things into a PLC. So whether that's machine vision, it's servo control, it's drive control, it's robot control. Uh, even, even in the same application, you could pull in uh, HMI development now. So um, it's almost as if the automation tools are automating the, uh, 
the process of building automation equipment. Um, what that does is allow us to have uh, to do more complex projects, allows us to uh, take on challenges that five, ten years ago we could not do because the processing capabilities were not there, or if they were there, the system would have been so complex it could never be maintained or operated. Well, the primary consideration when developing a robot system is safety. Um, robots are intended to take on repetitive tasks that uh, humans would do, um, but there's still going to be human interaction with them. Now, a traditional robot cell has separation uh, from, uh, from a maintenance person or a production person uh, with, with fences or some type of uh, electronic safety barrier. Um, and uh, the future of that is, is robots working next to humans. So the robot doing the, the tasks that a, that a robot could do and the human uh, doing, the, uh, doing the tasks that the robot cannot without the, the barriers. So safety absolutely is the primary consideration. Uh, as for the technical aspects of it, uh, you know, we've, we've really gotten down to where we could, we have projects right now where we're, we're doing uh, micron uh, type placement on pretty significant size robots. And, you know, that type of accuracy was, was certainly not available uh, years ago. And a lot of that is uh, in, improvements in the mechanics, but also in the uh, productivity tools, having integrated vision into the robot controllers, having line tracking, uh, having safety over, uh, over communications. All these things allow for a, uh, an easier to integrate, easier to maintain system that has a lot more capabilities and can uh, take the place of, the, uh, of dangerous, repetitive tasks that uh, traditionally would have to be done by humans. Well, just like um, the PLC and robot technology that we've, we've talked about, uh, the machine vision has also had some, some pretty big advancements in the, in the recent years. Uh, you mentioned the, the 3D uh, technology. That's, from a, from a sensing perspective, that's, uh, that is kind of the latest and, and greatest uh, on the sensing side. But the, the really, the most uh, powerful advancement is in the actual tools for, uh, for processing the images and, uh, and doing calculations on the images that the, uh, that the, the camera or, or vision system sees. So being able to do that allows us to uh, find de defects such as you know, cracks in a board that are, that are hard to see with the human eye that uh, with 3D technology may, um, it may be easier to see uh, with a vision system. Now, as for whether 3D is, is appropriate for everything, I would say it's, it's not. Um, you know, we have a philosophy that it should only be as complicated as it needs to be. So, um, you know, you should use vision where you need to use vision. You should use uh, 3D vision only when 2D vision is not an option. So um, there's always going to be a place for 2D vision, um, even as 3D vision advances, just as there's always going to be a place for standard devices, such as uh, photocells and, and proximity switches, uh, where vision may not be appropriate. All right. Thanks for your time. Thank you for speaking with me today, Grant.